Welcome, thanks for coming here. Um, I'm Radu, this is my colleague Rafao. We're uh, search consultants and software engineers at Semantext. And most of our work has to do with solar and elastic search. And um, so entity extraction, this is something that we've encountered like with our clients, but also as search consumers ourselves. So for example, before coming here, Rafael told me he has some noise cancelling headphones, helps him, you know, travel, kind of get more sleep. So I asked him which ones, and uh, turns out these. Now, of course, if I eyeball this, I know like Sony is a manufacturer, that other thing is a model number. So I set off to basically find the best price, and I searched across different things and got very different results. Um, for example, turns out there's a bunch of ways to show the same catalog number. You might have like a um, subset catalog or it might be written a different way. And usually I got this back, I would assume, when, uh, when catalog numbers would be uh, tokenized more aggressively. The problem with that is that I also got, at least on some of the websites, um, catalog numbers that had nothing to do with what I was searching for. And uh, when this is like when you don't have NT extraction, you just broadcast everything to all the fields, you might get a lot of junk back, like even not the same manufacturer. Or actually, on some, on some website, I got pretty much like random products back. I guess anything that would match X or 1,000 would, would come back. So this is the problem that we're trying to solve here. So uh, today we would like to cover a few things uh, for you. We'll start with not so entity extraction like extended Dismax, go through a few functionalities in solar, uh, starting with the solar text tagger, and then we'll di dive in into uh, libraries and uh, tools that you can actually use and that are not close bound with solar, like OpenLLP, Spacey, Scikit-Learn, and so on. We'll end uh, all of that by showing you a query expansion using work to vec and finally learning to rank along with streaming expressions to show you what you can get out of solar uh, just by using the functionalities that are available out of the box. So we'll start with the basics, really basics, the extended Dismax query parser. We all know how it works, right? So it takes a set of terms, a set of fields on the other side, those fields can be boosted, those fields can have different boosts and so on. It uh, runs a combination ag uh, against those, that data and creates a disjunction mm -hmm. max query. However, that is a problem for us because if you run into too much tokenization, as Radu mentioned, then you will get a pile of garbage, uh, usually at the end, so you'll get too many products actually out of your solar. So a standard recall versus precision problem. So let's try uh, improving our relevancy here by extracting some metadata using solar. So the first thing that comes uh, into mind with that is solar text tagger. Coming in with solar 7.4, we have the ability to define a special field type uh, based on a FST50 postings format. Once we have that and we send the data to solar, uh, the tags that we are interested in, we can send pure text documents and retrieve information if the given document contains the tags that we are actually interested in. That gives us uh, ability to enrich the metadata of the document uh, during pre-processing of, pre of the documents and then use that during query time. So uh, to not just tell about it, we'll uh, show you a few demos today. Uh, keep in mind that all of these demos are available on our GitHub. Uh, it's open so you can just reach out and uh, try it yourselves. So uh, when it comes to that text tagger, we, we will use already predefined solar. We have something there. We need a few things for it to be working. First of all, we need that field type to be defined, right? So allow me to actually copy paste. Don't do it at home, but I'll do it, just uh, not to do too many mistakes here. <coughs> so the idea here is that we'll use a schema API of solar, and for the collection called tagger, we'll add a new field type uh, called tagging, uh, based on text uh, field in solar, with uh, this postings format that I've mentioned, that FST50. The 
key point here is one additional thing. During index side, we need to have concatenated graph filter factory enabled as the last filter to be able to actually properly index that data that text tagger will be able to work on. So let me make it uh, up a bit. And uh, then uh, query analysis, very simple. The only thing that I'm doing here at the bottom are adding two fields uh, to my schema, a title and title tag. For those of you who do, can't see that from the, uh, from the bottom, I can't make it up. Uh, but <laughs> let, let's, um, yeah, just a second. I'll put it uh, a bit up should be better right now. So we can see two fields, one title, which is of type text general, and the title tag, which we are interested in uh, uh, on based on that tagging type, and of course, copy field to copy the data between those fields. That's, that's the first step. Now, let's index some data that we would like to actually extract from our text, so those tags that I've mentioned. To do that, I'll ju I'm just indexing data as normal to solar. So I'm running a post uh, verb of HTTP and I'm sending the data in an array uh, to solar. That's pretty simple. And I have the data already prepared. Now I need one more thing. I need the request handler to be defined in solar, the tagger request handler that will actually tag the data. So that is again quite simple. I will use solar API here. And uh, the request actually looks like this. I'm using an add request handler command, named slash tagger, pretty simple. The only thing to remember is that we have a special class here to be used, solar text, the tagger request handler, and that's everything that we need to actually know about. And once solar actually accepts the request, uh, we are able to uh, tag the data. We have a few documents here for you as, a, as the test data, actually 37 data documents. But we'll take one and see how the tagging actually works. The one I'll, the one I'll use is uh, the, the one number 10. So it looks like this. So we have a title of Radu, Georgie, JSON logging with Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch was one of the tags. So let's see if our solar will be able to actually extract that. Let me just run one command out of that. So a simple curl that reads the, uh, reads the data uh, here. It takes that file, reads the title field, and then runs that against the tagger handler. And I'm only interested in two fields here, the ID and the title. So as you can see in the response, uh, that will be better. In the response, we have two sections. First of all, let's look at the, uh, at the end. So at the response section, we have the title, the Elasticsearch tag returned with some identifier. And the same ad identifier is here uh, set in, uh, uh, returned in the tag section with the start and, and offset and the IDs that were actually found in the document. So you can connecting that to two together can give us a possibility of enriching and putting, for example, those tags in a separate field that can be used during query time, okay? Okay, so this works well if you if what you need is dictionaries, uh, are dictionaries. So next, we're going to look at OpenNLP, which is already integrated with Solar in a bunch of places. OpenNLP is like a general NLP framework written in Java. Um, so you can use this as part of uh, your analysis chain for like tokenization, part of speech tagging, um, defining sentences and lemmatization. What we're interested in here is named entity extraction. And that is already integrated as part of, as an update processor, but it's not, uh, we don't have a query parser at this point. Uh, but still, let's jump into another demo and, and just kind of get a feel of how it works. Hello, okay. So I have OpenNLP here downloaded and extracted and uh, what's also nice is you, you can get some uh, predefined models that you can just download from the website. So here I want to show how, how you can use the OpenLP binary. Normally this would be like Java code, but here I'll, I'll just demo with, with the binary. So you'll just send some text. I'll show you in the larger screen in a, in a second. So I'm going to send some text, let's say introduction to solar 2018, and this goes to the OpenLP binary. 
uh, to our token name finder class and we're going to provide the model. And this, as you can see, already extracted that 2018 is a date. Now, if we, if we want to move further and try a different request, let's say Solar Elasticsearch YouTube. If what I expect is to have YouTube extracted as like a URL component, we don't really have a model already for that. We can try with the organization pre-built model, but it still doesn't find YouTube. So I think this is a good point to create our own model. Not clear, clear. Okay, so for our model, we need three things. We need some data to train it. We need some features, actually some feature generators and the algorithm that we want to use. So uh, the data, it looks like this. What is it? Uh, queries. So data needs to be tagged. I mean, that this is how you usually send it. Uh, you would have, in this case, uh, it would be queries, and uh, you would tag the entities with these start and end tags, and this would be the whoops. <laughs> this would be the uh, the field name. Usually, for each model, you would only use a one field name. Um, so in this case, you have like just like regular queries that would typically end on on YouTube or on Vimeo. So this is our data, and now for features, let's try with more. So features, th this will be like an XML file with your feature generators. And this is very close to the default. And the default tends to look at the context. So like a window of tokens, what kind of token is it? Uh, what part of the sentence is it? Is it in the beginning or an end? Things like that. Uh, you can, of course, plug in your own code here. And finally, uh, the algorithm. So here I'm going to use, there's, there's a few to choose from. Here uh, we have Perceptron, uh, how many times we want to iterate uh, maximum through the data set, and what's the minimum frequency at which we want to keep words. So in this case, we have a relatively small data set, so we're just going to keep all of them. All right, now let's train the model. So it's again, we'll, be the, uh, we'll use the OpenNLP binary. It's going to be the token name finder trainer class. We're going to specify the output model, the language. We can support multiple languages, not really our case here. Uh, our parameters for the algorithm, the features, uh, and the data. And of course, in which encoding uh, data comes in. So this was very quick because we have a relatively small data set, like 37 documents. And now we can retry the same, um, the same query. So again, Solar Elasticsearch YouTube with our uh, newly created model. And you see it extracted YouTube uh, as a URL. Of course, you can improve on this. You can like, um, uh, refine your features. You'll normally want to have more data. But this is just like a good start, I think. Okay, so you've seen the uh, open NLP examples, and uh, let's move to a language that is used by data scientists. So Python here, and one of those libraries that Python provides is Spacey. Basically, the idea is that you it is quite simple to use. Uh, for, so for a person who doesn't know how to code or doesn't know how to actually work with data, uh, Spacey is quite easy to use and to get uh, to a start with. So for example, uh, you could use one of the pre-trained models already or t uh, train your mo a model yourself. Like Radish only, the idea is like, uh, like this. You, put a, you have a text and you have an entities or features that you would like to uh, for Spacey to actually uh, uh, detect, let's call it, or classify in, the, in, that, uh, in that text. So you run a training loop against, and you put uh, into the training loop, you extract text and the labels. You put that into for Spacey, and this is how uh, the model is created. Keep in mind that you need a large number of data, maybe not large. But for our example, we'll be using only 10 documents, while the documentation says that 3,000 is a good start for the basic training. So, and you'll see why. Uh, once we have that, we can easily 
like try to improve our query re relevancy or the data itself. So during processing of the data, when we index it, we can just run the, run the data against, against our model using Spacey and extract some of the information to separate metadata fields, like tags, manufacturer, and so on. Then during query, we again take the query from the user, first run it against the model, extract the needed uh, data, and then we can actually search for what we or think or what we expect our user to be searching for. So just like you can see here, uh, Sony headphones and MDR1000X when the manufacturer Sony was actually extracted, at least in that example. And again, instead of talking more about space, I would like to actually demo it and show you how to use uh, it in two cases uh, for right now. So let me clear that, but I think I have space here. Okay, so first, uh, first thing first, example with the pre-trained model. I already have Spacey installed, uh, so I have the model downloaded. And let me show you the code first. Uh, and the relevant part is actually here. So uh, after importing the library in Python, I'm just using Spacey load to, and provide the name of the model that I would like to load and it returns me with an NLP object that I can use for named entity recognition right away. So for example, this is the way that I'll be printing, just printing the, the entities here. So I'm running a, do a document against the NLP. You can see actually it here, NLP and the Unicode uh, characters for the, for the title of the document. And I'm running a loop there to display labels and entities for that, for that document. So uh, let's see how that default, default model actually uh, works. So running that will give us a few information. Organization, Radu, <laughs> nice to meet you. Uh, nice to meet you. Georg, you're Jason, logging as a person. OK. As you can see, it doesn't work pretty well. The second document it may be considered a bit better, like semi-text as an organization. You can see here, person, Radu Georgie. This is true. But organization, Rafał Kuch is not really uh, good and run solar as a person and docker as a person. Uh, that's not really good. So to actually improve that, we can either try to improve that model or create our own and train it on the, some data set that will actually <coughs> match our use case. So that will match our domi domain uh, data. So let's try doing that. It's, uh, oh, sorry about that. So I have an exa example here as well, and uh, it's a bit more complicated, but let me try going through that quickly. So first of all, we will have data. And the data, you already seen that on the slide, uh, each line is actually defining a single document and entities for that. So for the entity, like here on the, in the first document for a person, we uh, define a starting and an ending offset and the name of the feature that we would like to extract. So for example, here we have a person. We can come up with those features, of course, there. Uh, and we have Otis Gospodnetic. Then we have a person again, and so on. But however, here you can see that for Monitorama EU 2013 Radu Georgie document, we have three of them. So conference, date, and a person. Once we have that training data set, we can actually create a blank model on one of those uh, supported languages. For example, just like here, spacey blank on the ling uh, language English. And the key point here is to add a, a named entity recognition pipeline so that spacey actually knows what it can, what it needs to do. It can do tokenization, lemmatization, and so on. But we are only interested here in entity recognition. So we uh, create the pipeline called named entity recognition and add it to our NLP object. Once we have that, we also need to say what kind of entities can be actually uh, encountered in our training data. And after that, we can start the training. So we start the training loop by calling uh, begin training method on the NLP object and run then this training loop that we already mentioned. So in a range of a few repetitions, Keep in mind that, uh, as I've mentioned, you, you really need more documents to make that uh, a better model. Here I'm running 20 uh, repetitions because I would like to have like a bit more documents. At first I shuffle them, 
So they are in a random order. And then I take the text and annotation and call an NLP update uh, on, that, uh, on that object. And the rest of the code is just printing the data as we've already seen. So let's see how that actually works. So we'll do the training live. And we'll do that two times to show you the differences and why they happen. God bless you. Uh, so first of all, it will take some time. And you can see here that the first document already we see we already see the difference in that model. So you can see that uh, only uh, Radu Georgiev was actually found as a person here. So extracted. Then in the second document uh, with that ID 20, we have tech solar person, Radu Georgie, and a company, Sematex, and a person, me, in that third document. However, if we would rerun that, we I would expect to get slightly different results just because I don't have enough data to actually uh, produce a model that would be able to run consistently. So as you can see, the first document is quite nice, but the second already is way different. And the person run solar is not something that I would li actually like to be called. But anyway, uh, you can see that by improving the, that, you can get a nice model that will work for named entity recognition. OK. Um, so. So far, we kind of went into NLP a little bit. But if you have uh, queries like this, which have very little context, uh, you could argue that this comes down to like a classification problem. What is each word? Is it a manufacturer? Is it a model number? Um, so we can just kind of identify the features that would be interesting. Let's just take some examples here, like the frequency. I would assume the manufacturer will appear multiple times in our data set. A model number is somewhat more unique. How many spaces do we have? How many digits? Like a model number would have presumably, in general, m more digits. So we can basically take those features, train a classifier, see how that works. Um, so let me uh, show an example of that. Um, let me show you some, uh, like the sample data set first. So I took some headphones and just extracted the manufacturers and the, uh, and the model numbers. So these are some manufacturers. You can see they're not deduplicated because I'm interested in the frequency. And it will be the same for, uh, for model numbers. I have some model numbers here. And um, so this is my training data. I also have some similar uh, headsets um, as my training, as my test data. So the code, not cat. I think I want more. Small more screen. Yeah. So we're going to do this with scikit-learn. We're going to train uh, an SVM uh, classifier with it. Um, so this um, uh, this uh, function, what it will do is we'll read from our training file, and it will uh, generate uh, feature arrays like this. Actually, a dictionary between um, our uh, entities and, and the arrays. So if it's the first time I uh, encounter an entity, I will initialize the frequency to 1, and I will count the digits and spaces. And each time I encounter it again, I will in increment the frequency. And then um, I basically create my, my training set, so I have an x and a y. The x will be uh, my um, feature array for all the um, entities that I've read. And then um, the Y would be uh, our label. So I know if I read uh, first the manufacturers, then the models, I can label the first N as manufacturers, the others at, as models. And then I can train my model. Uh, this is going to be like a linear um, SVM. Basically, I'm going to have uh, N dimensions, one for each feature. Um, vectors, and it's going to kind of try to divide the space to figure out which are models, which are manufacturers. So then I'm going to uh, take the test uh, files and generate the same uh, feature dictionaries. Uh, I'm going to extract the feature arrays out of those, and I'm going to try to predict it to, to test my model, right? Um, so let's see how that works. Uh, and test. 
Okay, some warnings here, let's ignore them. So this train, <laughs> this train my model and um, now for testing, these are the, uh, this time the duplicated manufacturers that I'm trying. Uh, I'm sending these features up, up, up. Okay. Like this, can you see in the back? Okay, so uh, these are the, because I'm not actually sending uh, the uh, manufacturers to the classifier, I'm sending the feature arrays. So these are my feature arrays and it correctly identified that all three of them are manufacturers. And the same for models. These are my models. Uh, these are the feature arrays that were generated from the, mod from the m model numbers. And it indeed uh, figured that all of those uh, are model numbers. All right. So with uh, entity extraction, we would uh, have our query more precise. Now, what do we do about recall? And one step that we would usually want to do is to, to have like some query expansion. So I was looking for some good noise canceling headphones. Uh, I wouldn't mind if I see in, in the results some other good noise canceling headphones. Um, so one way to do this, it was brought up in this conference like a million times, is word to vec So uh, just a quick intro, this will generate vectors out of like the context of each word. And then you can use those vectors um, to either, you know, you can use them as class for classification. You can also use them to find if, like, if they are similar vectors, you can assume they are synonyms. Well, with some error, of course. So uh, let me show you a quick demo of word to vec So first, the data, as usual. This is uh, very similar to the data set used for OpenNLP, except that this time uh, I don't have things tagged. Um, I just have the whole thing, like uh, the query and then on YouTube and on Vimeo. And um, let's see the code now. So for word to vec there are multiple implementations. This time uh, we're using the one from Gensim, Gensim. Um, and um, so here, um, we're basically reading the file. We're splitting by white space and lower casing. So those will be the words that we'll send to Word to Vec. And, uh, mm -hmm. and here, <coughs> we're actually uh, training the model. So we're sending the words, and then we have a bunch of parameters. We can parallelize this if we wanted to. Um, we have the... Um, Again, the frequency, so we're going to cut off uh, words that are uh, less frequent than five. The window size and the number of iterations. The default is five, but here we have, I mean, usually we want to have a lot of data. This was, again, a theme throughout the conference. Here we don't have a lot of data, so we're going to um, re, uh, to iterate it more. It's kind of an anti-pattern. We're going to overfit, but uh, hey, this is a demo. So. Uh, we're going to then try to figure out what are similar words from you for YouTube and then for solar. So um, let's try that. Uh, how is it called? Word to vec demo, I think. Yes. Yeah. So here we're running those 5,000 iterations. Again, some warnings that we're going to ignore. So with YouTube, it finds with quite a lot of confidence that Vimeo is pretty close to it. Everything else is is far off. Uh, and then the interesting thing is actually found that solar is similar to Elasticsearch. Not too far off will be pretty much everything else that's in the same context. But still, I think this is a, a good start when we have you know, very little data just for this kind of demo. So we have synonyms. We have our data enriched. We're using name entity recognition. And now uh, we can actually do something around that and try to uh, boost up some of the data that we have. For, for example, most common manufacturers like Sony, Bose, had Sennheiser, right? So that's uh, what, we were, uh, what we are aiming here. So there are lots of actually possibilities, and one of them is using uh, learning to rank. So learning to rank, uh, to use learning to rank, we need to define features and a model and then use a re-ranking query. So how to extract features from our data? We can, of course, use that, what we already got from, for example, from OpenNLP or Spacey, 
or we can actually try to extract that from the metadata itself that we have already in our documents. So for example, we can use significant terms streaming expression to read the uh, frequencies uh, and actually the scores of uh, some of the terms that we are interested in and then uh, use that to calculate our scores for the features and the model somehow. So again, the last demo for today. Uh, let me show that how in a very simple way we can do that. Of course, keep in mind this is a simplified example. So uh, for production, it's not very close to being to production, but the only thing you would have to do, modify is the weights for the, uh, for the model. So again, Solar is already ready for us to work with it. So first of all, uh, what I actually need is I need to extract those uh, significant terms. And I'll be using uh, an expression here, streaming expression, to do that. So what it says, let's get from the bottom to the top. So first of all, I'm running a significant terms uh, expression here. On the LTR collection, it's already created. Match all query against the tags field. Limiting to 100, I could go lower, but that's only a demo. Then I'm specifying a few properties like minimum document frequency, maximum document frequency, and term length, the minimum term length, just to be able to work with our small data set. Of course, you would tune that to remove like, garbage from your data accordingly. I'm sorting that by scoring an ascending order. Why I'm doing that in ascending order? Because the more common the term is for significant terms, the lower it will be have the score. That's pretty uh, actual logical for significant terms because if you have a term that is very uh, uncommon, it may be higher because it may be the term that is very, very important but not appearing too many times. So we would like to shuffle that and actually do the opposite. So we want to have the score in ascending order. Once we have that, we, can, we do the select expression here and the select allows us to get the data from the sort and add or, or operate on those uh, tuples that were returned. So I'm multiplying the score by 100 and first dividing it by uh, 10 by, by it and returning it as a score just to have some kind of score for my uh, model and I'm returning the term itself. So once I run it, I get some kind of information from solar. So a score with an associated term uh, with it. For example, Elasticsearch, Solar, and Logging. Let's stick to those three at the top. Uh, so Elasticsearch, Solar, and Logging, and let's take only the integer part of the returned uh, score. So we have that. Uh, so now, as I mentioned, we need two additional things for learning to rank to, wor to work. Feature store and a model store. So first, the features. Okay, For those three tags that we actually got, Let's create a feature store here. It won't be perfectly visible, but I'll try my best uh, to show it to you. OK, I copied that. <coughs> Let me run it first, and then I'll comment on. So uh, using the schema API, I actually create a feature store in Solar for my LTR collection. And I'm pushing an array of features here. And each feature, def each fe each fe each feature sorry, defines an actual query with uh, a tag associated with it. So here you can see that a, f a feature with the name Elasticsearch underscore tag is a solar feature. And then we have params. And the params say that we have the terms uh, query parser being used on the tags field to find documents matching Elasticsearch. The idea here is to actually only uh, match the documents that match the given tag for in that. The same goes with solar and the same with logging. And the last feature that I would like also to include is the original score feature, which includes the original score of the document when the query actually runs. We will use that as well. So we have that now defined. Now we can use those features that we defined in a model store. So we can build up our model for the learning to rank to actually be able to re-rank the documents. So let me clear that and I'll take the second Oh, second command here. Uh, so the model definition is pretty straightforward as well. So first of all, we put it into a model store, again, using the schema API. I'm using a linear model here, and I give it a name, like tax, tax training model. 
I list the features that I would like to use inside my model. So those are listed here. And let me go a bit up with it. And then I provide the params. Those are, for example, weights that Solar will use during uh, when it will be using that model using lear learning to rank. So as you can see, I provided exactly the same scores, the integer parts, for my features. So Elasticsearch Solar got the same 146 something score, so I took the 146, then 142 for logging, and the score uh, for original score feature one, which is a neutral, sco uh, neutral scoring. So now that I have that all, we can compare how Solar actually uh, runs a query without learning to rank and with learning to rank. So first, the query without learning to rank. Uh, come on, come on, you query. Oh, don't ruin the demo here. OK, so I'm running a standard query, match all query, displaying only a few, a few fields out of the data, identifier, title, tags, and score. So we can see 37 documents have been returned, each document with a score of 1.0. So now if we would like to rescore that, of course in production, that would be your query, normal query, some, some products like manufacturer and so on. So, but this is just a simple example. So what we can do here is we can include that learning to rank uh, rescore query in our, uh, in our query. Let me first run it and then comment on it. So what I just did is I just included the RQ parameter, which stands for re-rank query. Uh, come on. OK. And I'm using the uh, learning to rank query parser here, providing two parameters, my model name and the number of documents that I would like to re-rank from the top of the results. So as you can see, the, instead of like having the score equal to 1, 0, I already have a different scoring here. So 293, which means that two features have been actu actually matched uh, to the, from the ones that were boosted. So Elasticsearch and Solar, and actually the one that added the one to that equation was actually the original score feature because our query is a match all query. If the query would be different, that score would be taken from, uh, from that query for the document. And of course, those are not the only things that you actually can do for improving your search, improving the relevancy of your search, named entity recognition, and so on. You have co libraries like Core NLP coming from Stanford, Google TensorFlow, or lots of other libraries that can suit your needs depending on what you actually want to do. So for example, TensorFlow can be uh, speeded up by using GPUs. So uh, that's one of the things that stands out. It's actually a very large machine learning library. So that's, uh, that's the other thing. As for us, Radu mentioned that we are search consultants. And not only, we also work on the product side of Sematex. So uh, for example, Sematex Cloud. So if you send data to us, you, can, you have the full visibility over the real user monitoring. So your, how your users actually interact with your site your metrics, your logs, you can combine it all together. Uh, both in, ter in terms of SaaS uh, product like Sematex Cloud and on-premises as well in the Sematex Enterprise. We also provide professional services and consultancy, and consultancy services on the, for Solar and Elasticsearch. And that's what we actually got for you to, today. Hopefully you get out something of that presentation and you learn something. We definitely did. So thank you for listening and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.